Hi, I'm Autumn, and in this guide I will go over what the Arjun Tournament in Ice Crown is and how to obtain the many rewards associated with the event. The rewards include mounts, pets, transmog and toys. If you've put off the Arjun Tournament for a while because it seems like there's a lot to do, worry not, this guide is for you. It can be a little intimidating to wrap your head around the Arjun Tournament, but the questline is actually incredibly straightforward once you begin and get an overview. In this case, however, I have done it for you right here in this guide. Fear the Arjun Tournament no longer. The video will be separated into an overview of the rewards before I get into the questing and progression system and how best to do it. And finally, I'll wrap the video up with final remarks and my own takeaways. The Argent Tournament was introduced back in Wrath of the Lich King patch 3.1 and is a world event consisting of daily quests and arena-like solo content. Through the activities you can do at the Argent Tournament grounds, you gain reputation and currency which can be used to buy rewards from various vendors. All rewards are tied to five city factions, one Argent Tournament faction, the Sunweavers or the Silver Covenant factions, and for Death Knights, the Knights of the Ebon Blade faction as well. The rewards include transmog, pets, mounts and toys. As you progress, you go through four ranks. Aspirant, Valiant, Champion and Crusader. The Arten Tournament itself had a very important purpose during Wrath of the Lich King. It was proposed by High Lord Tyrion Fordring that instead of a huge force marching against the Lich King only to be raised to serve the enemy in death, the Alliance and Horde were to send in just a small group of the most skilled and cunning warriors. The games in the tournament were meant to own the skills of these champions before they were sent to battle in Ice Crown. As you progress in the Ardent tournament, you unlock several collectibles. The really good ones are available for purchase once you reach the champion status and earn champion seals in the Crusaders Coliseum. All collectibles are tied to their individual factions and the more reputation you gain from each one, the more rewards you unlock. These rewards include several mounts, differing depending on your faction of course, and pets like the Don Moreau Cub and the Durotar Scorpion. Furthermore, as your reputation with either the Silver Covenant for Alliance or the Sun Reavers for Horde increase, you can buy items for champion seals from those factions as well. These include the Silver Covenant Hippogriff and the Sun Reaver Dragonhawk. The ultimate rewards, so to speak, are the Argent Warhorse and the Argent Hippogriff, both unlocked when you earn the Crusader title. They can be purchased from Dam Evniki Capsalis. The overall cost for rewards are as follows 50 champion seals for Tabard. 50 seals for banners, 100 champion seals for new model mounts, and 5 seals and 500 gold for old model mounts, 150 seals for hippogriff mounts, 150 seals for the Argent Pony, 40 champion seals for pets, and epic weapons are 25 seals, rare armor, necklaces and trinkets are all 10 champion seals. Wowhead has an overall list of all mounts, pets, gear and art bits and where to buy them on their website, which I have linked in the description below the video. The quest lines for Alliance and Horde are almost identical, though the quests take you to different locations and NPCs along the way. I will go over the quest line in as simple a manner as possible for easier understanding, though there are an increasing number of quests to pick up daily as your rank increases. Be aware that when you first begin your Argent tournament training and reach Valiant, you get daily quests from your personal faction only, the one tied to your main city. So for instance, your main faction as a human is Stormwind, for an Undead it's Undercity. 
However, once you become exalted with your main faction, referred to as exalted champion, you unlock progression with the others to become champion for all factions within the tournament. Once you do, you get the achievement Exalted Argent Champion of the Alliance or Horde. This way, you also unlock all rewards for Alliance factions if your character is Alliance, and all faction rewards for Horde if your character is Horde. Every time you rank up, new quests become available, so you don't have to do the same jousting a thousand times to get to Exalted. The ranks are as follows. Aspirant, Valiant, Champion and Crusader. For each of these ranks, you have a group of quests to follow. The groups are joining the Argent Tournament, an Aspirant's Training, a Valiant's Training, a Valiant Champion's Training, and a Champion's Daily Tasks. Wowhead has an excellent overview of all quests in the link I have put in the description below. Now, I'm going to take it from the top of how to start the Argent Tournament. Only the quest givers and some quest locations differ between the Horde and the Alliance. As always, remember to go to your minimap and toggle on Track Trivial Quests if you want to start the Argent Tournament on a high level character, which I recommend. Upon arriving in Northern Icecrown in Northrend at the Argent Tournament Grounds, look for the NPC Justicar Meryl Trueheart, who will give you the quest The Argent Tournament. The quest asks you to seek out Arcanist Talis from the Silver Covenant, if you're Alliance, and Magister Edian Sunhollow of the Sun Reavers, if you're Horde. From here on out, this is the NPC you want to seek out for your Aspirant dailies. Arcanist Talis and Edian Sunhollow will each give you three quests in the following order. Mastery of Melee, Mastery of the Shieldbreaker, and Mastery of the Charge. All three quests ask you to basically practice your jousting skills, or the lack of them. Once you've done that, you will get the quest up to the challenge. Up to the challenge is basically the quest that will make you rise in rank from Aspirant to Valiant, if you're good enough. For the quest, you just need to earn 15 Aspirant Seals. The seals you get from daily quests. If you do the quests every day, it should take three days to complete this gathering. Every day you can pick up the following dailies. Training in the field from Amariel Sunsworn on the Horde side or Avarath Swift Strike on the Alliance side. Learning the reins from Galathia Bright Dawn or Scout Shalindria. And one of the three, the Edge of Winter, a worthy weapon or a blade fit for a champion from Arcanist Talis or Magister Edian Sunhollow. The latter three will all be completed once. Be aware that when you pick up the Winter's Edge, it will not show you the location of the Lord Everblaze on your map. I can tell you that he is overlooking Crystal Song Forest from the coordinates 55.75. Once you loot his ever-burning ember, you can take it to the Maiden, whose location is shown on your map. Now, each of your Aspirant dailies will reward you with two Aspirant seals, except for training in the field, which will give you one. Once you have gathered 15 Aspirant seals from doing dailies, you'll get the quest The Aspirant Challenge from either Arcanist Talis or Magister Edian Sunhollow. The quest asks you to use all your training in mounted combat skills and defeat the Argent Valiant. Cross your fingers, you'll win. Look for Squire David in the Aspirant's Ring to challenge a Valiant. Be sure to ask the Squire how to take on the Valiant in a jostle because he will tell you which moves to use when. It'll make it much easier and quicker. Take him down and you've officially reached Valiant status. Once you have proven yourself to be worthy of the Valiant rank, you will start collecting Valiant's seals to prove yourself to your main city and become their champion. 
To do so, you first pick up the Valiant's Charge quest from your racial faction. Each have a different main NPC, but they should all hang out in the same tent as the Silver Covenant and the Sun Reavers. Note that Worgen begin their quests with the Nidal faction, and the Goblins begin theirs with the Orc faction. The daily quests you pick up to gather Valiant Seals are now at the enemy's gates, a Valiant's field training, and finally one of the three, the Winter's Edge, a worthy weapon, or a blade fit for a champion. Odd that you have to find those weapons every day. Once you have collected 25 Valiant Seals from the dailies, you turn them in to get the quest The Valiant's Challenge. If you do your dailies every day, getting enough seals should take you 5 days. The Valiant's Challenge will once again send you out to defeat another member of the Argent Tournament, this time a champion, to show your worth. To challenge them, talk to Squire Danny in the Argent Valiant Ring. Once you have successfully proven yourself to best a champion, you pick up a Champion Roises from your faction and turn it in at Justicar Muriel Trueheart, regardless of your faction. With it, you will receive an Argent Gruntling Companion Pet and can now begin working on Valiant quests for all other factions, as well as quests as a champion to earn Champion Seals. Heads up, it's a lot of dailies. Once you get your first champion title, you'll start to get busy with dailies. The regular champion's dailies will each give you one champion seal, and they are as follows. Battle before the citadel, among the champions, taking battle to the enemy, one of the three breakfast of champions, Gormok wants his snowballs, and what do you feed a yeti anyway? You've really done it this time, Cole. And one of the four, a leg up, rescue at sea, stop the aggressors, or the lights, mercy. Furthermore, you can unlock an additional daily quest, Threat from Above. To do so, you must accept the quest, The Dark Knight's Fall, from Crusader Rydella. She can be found inside the same tent as Justicar Meryl Trueheart. This quest will ask you to examine the Dusty Journal either in Silver Pine or Westfall, depending on your faction. The quest line is a short mystery that you have to solve, and it's quite a bit of fun. Upon completion, you unlock the Threat from Above daily permanently, which will reward you with two Champion's Seals every day. Edric the Pure is another additional questline that you can pick up from Justicar Meryl Trueheart when you become a champion. If you're a Death Knight, the quest is called the Scourgebane and takes you to Croc Scourgebane instead. From here on out, it's all about farming champion seals and valiant seals from your other factions to become a champion with as many of them as possible. If you want all the rewards, that is. There is one final rank to reach within the Argent Tournament. Crusader. A Crusader is a champion of all cities within your faction, which is greatly admired. Needless to say, with the title comes more daily quests alongside all your old champion dailies. The new quests to earn new champion seals are one of the four, Death Speaker Karos, Drotzen Rothgar, Mistcaller Ingvar, or Ornulf the Scarred. And one of the two, The Fate of the Fallen, or Get Kraken. Along the way in the Argent Tournament, you can earn additional achievements other than your champion titles. For those who care about achievements, here's a list of some you may want to chase. Argent Aspiration, which will be granted to you once you enter the Argent Tournament and speak to Justicar Meryl Trueheart. Argent Valor will be earned once you become a Valiant of your initial city and get recognized as such by either Magister Edian Sunhollow or Arcanist Talus. 
Lance a lot is an achievement granted upon defeating a rider from each of the cities at the Argent tournament. You earn tilted by defeating another real player in a mounted duel. This cannot be an NPC. It's just a flesh wound is given to you after you challenge and defeat the Black Knight when you complete the Black Knight's fall. Pony up is an achievement earned by purchasing and using the Argent Pony Brittle. This costs 150 champion seals and is only available after you have earned the Crusader title. And finally, the Sword in the Skull. This achievement is a reward upon completion of a Victory for the Silver Covenant or a Victory for the Sun Reavers, depending on your faction, which is triggered when you pick up the item Battered Hilt. The Hilt has a low chance to drop from any mobs in the heroic version of the following dungeons in Ice Crown Citadel. The Forge of Souls, Pit of Sauron or Halls of Reflection. And that's it. Once you have found all the important vendors around the tournament grounds and learned the vehicle jousting patterns, the tournament is incredibly straightforward and just a bit of a grind really. Stay consistent, perhaps during downtime in WoW, and you'll be rewarded with a great amount of collectibles with little effort. Just be sure to bring a max level character for the quickest progression. Also, do note that the companion pets you get from the Argent tournament are not bind on pickup and can be caged and sold on the auction house. Since so few are doing the Argent tournament these days, collecting champion seals for pets may be a good way to earn some gold. Thank you so much for watching the guide. Leave a comment, a like or a follow here if you want. And remember that I stream over on Twitch Tuesday and Saturday at the moment. The link is in the description below. Take care and I hope to see you there.